Get ready for a deep dive into 15 Google Calendar tips and tricks. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned user, these insights will boost your efficiency and organization. Let's jump in. Number 1. Shortcuts Mastery. They enable swift navigation throughout your calendar. By utilizing shortcut keys, you can effortlessly switch between views, navigate to specific dates, create new events, and jump to today's schedule. These are just a few examples of what you can achieve with keyboard shortcut keys, and the best part is, you only need to remember one shortcut key. Press the question mark key on your keyboard, and a cheat sheet with all available shortcut keys will appear. If you don't see this option, you might need to enable it. Head to the settings gear in the top right hand corner, click on settings, then on the left hand side, navigate to keyboard shortcuts. Ensure that the corresponding box is checked. Number 2. Mouse Magic. For instance, in this calendar, you often need to view the upcoming three days. Although there's no preset view for this in the calendar views, you can simply navigate to the side panel calendar, highlight the desired three days, and instantly update the calendar display, an incredibly useful feature. Moreover, the mouse enables you to easily reschedule meetings. If a meeting is scheduled early in the week and you need more preparation time, you can click on the event, drag it to the end of the week, and adjust the timing accordingly. Additionally, you can use the mouse to create new events by dragging on my calendar. This allows you to specify the precise duration for a single day event or even extend it to cover multiple days with a simple drag across the calendar. Number 3. Event Creation You can generate an event directly from an email within Gmail. Take, for example, an email exchange with a colleague where discussions seem to be going in circles without reaching a resolution. To initiate this process, click on the ellipsis icon at the top, and you'll find the option to create an event. This automatically imports all the relevant details from the email thread, the subject becomes the title, the email content becomes the description, and everyone listed on the to and cc lines is automatically added as a guest. The only remaining steps are to set a location and then save the event. Number 4. Dual Time Zones You have the option to enable additional time zones on your calendar. This feature proves invaluable for scheduling meetings with individuals situated in different parts of the world. To configure this setting, Navigate to the top right-hand corner and click on Settings. From there, access the time zone settings on the left-hand side. Activate the display of a secondary time zone by checking the corresponding box. In the drop-down menu, select the desired additional time zone. You can also assign labels to easily identify these time zones on your calendar. Upon returning to your calendar, you'll notice the presence of the added time zone. Number 5. Multi-Notifications You have the ability to receive multiple notifications for an event. Between the initial notification and the event start time, there's a risk of completely forgetting about it. To configure this, navigate to the left-hand side, hover over the calendar where you want to make the adjustment, click on the ellipsis, and choose Settings. Within the Event Notification section on the left-hand side, you'll find the default notification time, which, in this case, is currently set to 30 minutes before the meeting. You can supplement this with an additional notification, for instance, setting one for zero minutes before the meeting ensures a reminder right as the meeting commences, preventing lateness or missed appointments. You can further customize notifications according to your preferences. For instance, you might want an email message a day before the meeting, and you can easily configure that. If you prefer to customize notifications for specific events without altering the default settings, simply click into the individual event and add the desired notifications, be it a pop-up or an email message. Number 6. Cal.NewMagic Here's a swift tip for you. Easily generate a new event by visiting cal.new. As an added perk, you can also access docs.new, sheets.new, slides.new, sites.new, allowing you to create new content to your heart's content. 
Number 7. Taskbar Shortcut. A quicker way to access your calendar is by adding it to your Windows taskbar. In Google Chrome, click the ellipsis, go to Save and Share, and select Create Shortcut, which generates a shortcut on your desktop. However, if you want it on your taskbar, right-click on the shortcut, choose Show More Options, and click on Pin to Taskbar. Now, you'll have an icon on the taskbar, and clicking on it opens up your Google Calendar. Number 8. Calendars of Interest. You have the option to incorporate calendars of interest into your own calendar. On the left-hand side, adjacent to other calendars, click on the plus icon, and then choose to browse calendars of interest. This enables you to add various events such as friends' birthdays. You can also include regional holidays, religious holidays, or even sports calendars. As an illustration, I want to add the Arizona calendar. Upon selection, I can see the upcoming games, and if I wish to disable this overlaid view, I simply need to uncheck the box next to the Arizona on the left-hand side. Number 9. Daily Agenda Email. You have the option to receive a daily agenda email. This feature ensures that you conveniently receive your daily calendar overview directly in your email inbox. To configure this, hover over the calendar on the left-hand side where you want to activate this feature. Click on the ellipsis and then select Settings. Navigate to other notifications on the left-hand side, and you'll find the option to receive a daily agenda email. Click on the drop-down and confirm that it's set to email. Number 10. Email Control. You can also customize your other notification preferences. By default, you get an email notification each time someone responds to one of your meetings. However, when dealing with larger meetings, this can result in a flood of emails in your inbox. To address this, I prefer to check the event directly to see the list of attendees who have accepted or declined. Therefore, I adjust the notification setting to None, sparing my inbox from unnecessary emails. Number 11. Collaborative Calendars You have the option to collaborate by sharing your calendar with others. This can be particularly beneficial when working closely with someone and you want them to have visibility into your schedule. To set this up, hover over the calendar on the left-hand side that you wish to share, click on the ellipsis, and select Settings. Within the Settings menu, click on Share with Specific People, where you can add individuals by entering their email addresses. Additionally, you can specify the permissions you want to grant, ranging from simply sharing your free and busy times to providing full control over your calendar. Once shared, the recipient will receive an email enabling them to subscribe to your calendar. Upon subscribing, they can view it under Other Calendars in their Google Calendar and overlay your calendar view onto their own. Number 12. Access Requests. You also have the option to request access to someone else's calendar. On the left-hand side, adjacent to other calendars, click on the plus icon and then choose Subscribe to Calendar. Enter the email address associated with the calendar you're interested in, and this will send a request to them for access. Once they accept the request and establish permissions, their calendar will now be visible under Other Calendars. You can then choose to overlay it on top of your calendar by checking or unchecking the corresponding box. Number 13. New Calendar Setup. You have the flexibility to incorporate additional calendars, whether it's for your family or your team at work. To do this, go to the main calendar screen, and in the bottom left-hand corner next to other calendars, click on the plus icon. Choose, Create New Calendar, where you can input a name and description, and then click on Create. Your new calendar will now be visible in the bottom left-hand corner. Click into it to adjust settings, determining who has access and configuring notification settings. When creating a new event in the main calendar view, you can specify which calendar it belongs to. This allows you to organize events easily. The stripe of color on the left side of the event signifies the calendar it's associated with. Additionally, on the left-hand side, 
you can toggle the visibility of each calendar on or off in the main view. Number 14. Website Publication. You can share your calendar on a website, such as a Google site. Hover over the calendar you wish to publish and click on the ellipsis. Then, Access Settings. In the Settings menu, navigate to Integrate Calendar, where you'll find the embed code. Additionally, you can customize the appearance of your calendar by clicking on a button, allowing you to choose what to display, set dimensions, select background color, and configure various other settings. Once you've finished customizing, click on Copy Embed Code at the top. Now, you can go to platforms like Google Sites, insert the copied embed code, and your calendar will be visible on the web page. Number 15. Change Event Owner. Suppose you've set up an event, but circumstances change, and you'll be on vacation, and you want someone else to take charge of the event. In such cases, you can modify the owner. On your calendar, locate the event, click on it, then select the ellipsis, and finally, choose Change Owner. Input the email address of the person you want to assign as the new owner, and they can seamlessly take over the event. Thanks for exploring these calendar tips with us. If you found them helpful, give us a thumbs up, share, and subscribe for more tech insights. Until next time, happy scheduling.